The International Space Station will soon be no more and SpaceX has been chosen to bring it down back to Earth to burn up in Earth's atmosphere. I'm talking about the US deorbit vehicle, which is a very expensive vehicle that NASA has decided it is going to fund so that it can safely deorbit the International Space Station in the 2030-ish time frame. It is a topic of big controversy. <laughs> There are some of you out there screaming, why are we doing this? Why are we burning up the biggest thing we've ever built in space? The International Space Station has been nominated for Nobel Prizes. I mean, like, it is a feat of humanity. It's one of those memes of, we don't build great things anymore, and then they show the ISS, where, yes, we do. <laughs> we do still build, you know, amazing things. We've had other space stations before ISS, and there are other space stations aside from ISS, like Tiangong Space Station, but the International Space Station is just this geopolitical, technical, scientific beauty that has come together and served us well for over 20 years. And of course it has its issues right now. We're dealing with some leaks, especially on the Russian side. There are several reasons why we need to move on from the International Space Station, but I am going to be emotional here because I have a connection to the ISS. My very first full-time job after graduate school was working for the International Space Station National Lab, working on ISS payloads, getting them approved or helping people to realize that they could even fly their science or their technology development on the ISS or in some cases off of the ISS in terms of like CubeSat deployment. I got very attached to our space station. I, um, I understand its flaws and I understand the need to move on. Do you all remember that Sandra Bullock movie Gravity from a little over 10 years ago? <sighs> I know it's a silly movie, but the company took us as a, as a company to go see that movie in theaters. And at that time, it really clicked with me that something could go wrong and we could lose the space station. Yes, we would lose the astronauts on board. That would be horrific. I mean, there's other sci-fi that talks about how we save the astronauts but lose the space station. But even just losing the space station with astronauts saved, that would be tragic. And yet that's what we're planning to do. We are planning to do this 2030 ish. I don't know if it's going to be extended. There are reasons why you wouldn't extend the International Space Station. I'll talk about that. But there are also reasons why you might want to. So we're going to talk about both of those. But first, I want to talk about the deorbit vehicle. So two years ago, NASA decided that they really can't rely on the Russians anymore to <laughs> safely do much of anything in space with this partnership. The partnership had been deteriorating for a few years. So it wasn't just the war in Ukraine. But that was a contributing factor. And the head of Roscosmos at the time, Dmitry Rogozin, was incendiary? Maybe that's the term? He, he made quite a few statements that were very anti-partnership, very questionable in terms of um, how good of a technical partner Roscosmos was going to be. He is no longer the head of Roscosmos. He got, I think, a promotion <laughs> within the Russian government. Uh, there's a, a more reasonable head of Roscosmos right now, but the truth is like the United States and Russia are at odds at the moment geopolitically. Yet we are still working together on the ISS. It is a partnership that cannot be broken apart by design. They literally designed the International Space Station as they were transitioning from space station freedom and those kinds of designs. They designed it so that the US and the USSR could not separate from the ISS. And there are other partners involved, of course. I mean, like the Japanese and the Canadians and the Europeans, and they are um, they have a say and they have modules and they absolutely assist with a lot of the operations of the ISS. But the two main participants there, NASA and Russia, they can't be broken apart. So the initial concept studies were done by NASA thinking that maybe a Russian progress, um, up to three, I think, three Russian progresses uh, would deorbit the ISS. They also looked at the Cygnus, Northrop Grumman Cygnus, just decided that they needed more capabilities. So two years ago-ish, they issued an RFI, a request for information for the U.S. industry, the space industry in the United States, to look to see what capabilities the um, industry here, the space industry, would propose to deorbit the ISS. They said that they would spend a, a large amount of money to do this because it's a safety concern. I'll link to the video I did recently um, where I talked about how NASA and other government agencies are going to be held more and more accountable financially for the damage done to 
things on the ground and, and perhaps in the future life on the ground from falling space debris that did not burn up on reentry. Specifically in this case, I'm talking about an ISS battery pallet that did not fully burn up and hit a house in Naples. And now that family in Naples is asking NASA to pay 80 grand. That's just a small battery pallet. If you're talking about something the size of a house, the International Space Station, yeah, that thing's not burning up fully in the atmosphere. Under the nominal deorbiting scenario provided by NASA, so this might have changed, but according to at least the RFI that they issued back two years ago, it would attach, the, the deorbited vehicle would attach to no two module a year before re-entry, and then the altitude of the ISS would gradually de, uh, decline. So the ISS, even though it's in space, there's no like cutoff. There's no like absolute cutoff to where the atmosphere ends and space begins. We just like round numbers. So we say 100 kilometers, 50 miles, depending on who you talk to. The ISS, despite being in low Earth orbit, there's still particles, atmospheric particles that hit the ISS that causes drag. And so periodically the ISS is boosted. So that's what they're going to stop. <laughs> they're going to stop boosting it and let it gradually decline in altitude. And then they're going to use that deorbit vehicle to fire its thrusters and control the re-entry point. Um, they, they are very good at doing that. And so there's no problems there with the ISS under a controlled deorbit hitting any lander populated area because there's a segment of the South Pacific Ocean where there's like nothing around it like anywhere and that's where we typically have a, a satellite graveyard essentially and so that's where they're aiming and they'll make it there you know it's not like the Chinese that just have their boosters re-entering over villages and populated areas and you don't know where it's going to hit that's not what's happening here in fact that's exactly why NASA is putting aside this budget despite the budget constraints that NASA is under in order to safely deorbit it so that NASA isn't harming any life or property on the planet when it, aside from ocean life, aside from ocean life, uh, when it deorbits the ISS. I will cry when this happens. Why do we want to deorbit the ISS instead of just boosting it to a higher orbit and keeping it for centuries in a stable orbit? Um, for one, you would need all the partners to agree to that, or you need to buy out some of the other partners that own modules and, and equipment up there. Um, Honestly, I think that is still doable, but that apparently has been looked at by NASA and they're just not willing to commit to do that. The Mir space station was sold to a private entity, MirCore, but apparently that's not an option either to sell it to a private entity. I don't know why, but um, whenever NASA is asked about these things, they just say that they've done the studies and it would take X number of rockets or you know, thrusters to boost it and it would be cost prohi prohibitive and logistically prohibitive and therefore they're not gonna do it. I think the truest reason why they don't want to keep the ISS is because they need that vacancy to geopolitically get the support it needs for commercial LEO destinations, CLD, commercial space stations, in other words. So if you talk to the CLD providers, you know, we've got Orbital Reef, we got Star Lab, we got Axiom Station, and then we've got other ones that are um, under non-funded agreements with NASA, such as Vast Haven. I, these companies, they are trying to raise money right now. They're trying to raise money both in terms of um, investors and in terms of getting uh, fu user, users, future users, customers. And so if you are an investor and you're looking to see who, where, where's the money going to come and you're suddenly still competing with an ISS that's up there for centuries. <laughs> and traditionally, the ISS has heavily subsidized research on the International Space Station. So if you've got the choice between a government space station that is heavily subsidized by various government entities, you know, not just in the United States, but other governments as well, versus a private space station, it's going to be hard to justify why you would spend the extra money to use a private space station for in from a user point of view and from a investor point of view so the commercial space station developers they're t saying we really do need the iss to be deorbited 2030 so that we can tell the users the potential users and the investors here's when we're going to start making money here's when we're no longer competing with the iss now they all have different start times in terms of when they launch and become operational so that's not what i'm talking about here they will start becoming operational ideally before the international space station is deorbited 
but then they are still in competition if the ISS is extended. I have argued that we might want to consider extending the ISS if it looks like there will be no commercial space station available and operational by the time the ISS is deorbited. So let's say it's deorbited 2030 and all these space stations, all the commercial space stations are late and we've got a gap. Well, that's going to look really embarrassing when you have the Chinese space station. The Chinese space station is saying, come do research with us. They're, they're telling the world, you can do research on our space station. They're even wanting to open it up, although they haven't done so yet, but they, they're thinking and saying that they're going to open it up to non-Chinese astronauts. And so geopolitically, it would be embarrassing for NASA, for the United States, if China has a space station in Leo and the United States does not. And you, you can't make last minute decisions because these things take so much time. And so if you're going to deorbit the ISS, you need to know that like a year or two ahead of time. If you're going to extend the ISS because you think these other space stations are going to be late, uh, again, that needs to be planned out and it needs to be agreed upon by all the other partners in the ISS, which I don't see that being a problem if it's a short extension. They've already gotten a short extension. There were original plans um, during the Trump administration. They were really playing with dates about when they should deorbit ISS, you know, 2024, 2028, and now it's 2030. And so there have been examples of extensions. One of the current challenges is we are seeing more and more leaks on the ISS. Again, it's, it's on the Russian side. Um, the Russians have not been doing a very good job in terms of quality control of their hardware, operations. I mean, there's so many reasons. This is a whole other video as to why the Russian space program is deteriorating. Um, let me know in the comments if you want me to do that video. The majority of the pressure is on NASA to keep it all together. <laughs> And so uh, NASA is the number one funder of the ISS. NASA is also trying to build the Gateway Space Station around the moon with partners. NASA is also trying to kickstart the Artemis program with crewed launches. So they already have uncrewed launch of Artemis 1 and now they've got Artemis 2 in the works and Artemis 3 in the works and the rest of it. And all the other programs that NASA is juggling right now under a constrained budget environment. So really NASA is trying to get rid of this huge burden that the ISS carries in terms of financial commitment so that it can move on to other things. And of course, NASA is going to spend money being an anchor tenant on at least one, possibly two or more commercial space stations. But that is so little, that is a significantly less contribution than the International Space Station, which was never built to be cost effective. You can't blame them. It was built to work. It was not built to be cost effective or profitable. Which brings us to SpaceX. What is SpaceX going to use? to deorbit the ISS. And this is all speculative because nobody has said anything yet in terms of details. But one thing to note is that the launch will be procured separately. So this could be a modified Dragon or some brand new vehicle that is attached to the ISS. It could, which would then presumably be launched on Falcon 9 or Falcon Heavy. I can't imagine that SpaceX wouldn't do its own launch here. Um, or this could be a modified Starship. Whatever space, whatever design SpaceX submitted to NASA, it was better than all the other options because NASA chose it. And I don't know if they're planning to release the source selection document to talk about why they chose and who the other bidders were. But think of all the other companies out there that might have bid on this proposal. And SpaceX was the one that was chosen. And it might have been just based on cost and the fact that SpaceX can do it. Or it might have been specific about the design or architecture that SpaceX is planning to use. And that'll be really interesting to see. But the very fact that this award was given, and I didn't even tell you the uh, actual numbers of the award, the single award contract has a total potential value, not total actual value, but potential value of $843 million dollars launch services for the U.S. deorbit vehicle will be a future procurement. So uh, 843 plus whatever the launch cost is. That's how much NASA is giving SpaceX. And that tells me they're pretty serious. I, I don't really think they're going to cancel this. They've got advisory boards and they've got Congress both telling them that they need to do this. So <laughs> I don't think that NASA is going to back out of this, which means the ISS is truly coming down. 